4K TVs are cheaper than ever, but are they worth it? It's really confusing, and there's a lot of technical mumbo jumbo and misleading sales gimmicks to wade through, but don't worry, we'll figure it out together. I'm James Papadopoulos, and this is TextBank. TV manufacturers are always looking for new ways to get people to throw out their perfectly good TVs and get new ones. First it was 3D, which is ridiculous since there's almost no 3D content to watch. Then it was curved TV because they were trying to find something dumber than 3D and they're really good at finding stupid things. But then came 4K UHD. What's this then? Something that's actually new? Is it worth it? Well, sit back and let the lesson begin. Let's start with the basics. What is 4K and UHD? Well, it's the number of dots that make up the picture, or pixels. To help you better understand, let's look at how TVs first got their start. At around 640 pixels wide and 480 pixels high, standard definition wasn't bad for its time. But then came HD. There's a few different versions of HD, but let's concentrate on the mainstream 1920 by 1080. Way more pixels than before. Now, 4K is 4096 by 2160, four times bigger than HD. UHD is a tiny bit smaller, but for our purposes, they're basically the same thing. So, case closed, right? 4K UHD is the best one. Well, not so fast. To get the benefits of all those pixels, your TV has to be pretty big, 65 inches or bigger. Or you won't really be able to tell the difference between regular HD and UHD. It's kind of like not being able to see the dots that make up a newspaper image unless you get really close. So let's do a test. While this show is usually shot in regular HD, this particular episode is in UHD, so I could show you my boogers. And so you could tell the difference. If you're watching on YouTube, you should turn 4K on now. I went out with a 4K cinema camcorder to shoot some test 4K footage. For you nerds out there who might be wondering, this was shot on a JVC GY LS300 using JLog and there is minimal color grading. So both sides of the screen are showing the exact same video except one is UHD and the other is 1080p. And the chances are you won't be able to tell the difference unless you're watching this on a really big TV. Just so you know, the UHD was on the left. Another important thing to consider is the type of backlighting the TV has. In other words, how the screen is lit. I could make a whole other video about TV backlighting, but the short version is, the more control the TV has over the lighting, the better. You'll want to look for full array backlit TVs. That means if there's a bright thing on the screen and a dark thing on the screen at the same time, the TV can turn down the light on the part of the screen that should be darker, giving you a much better image. To add to the confusion, OLED or OLED is even better since it's a whole new technology but it's still too expensive for most, and if you could afford one, you probably wouldn't be watching this video, now would you? So let's move on. Refresh rates. The refresh rate is how fast the TV can show new frames or pictures per second. It's just more marketing mumbo jumbo as far as I'm concerned. Now, I won't get too into it, but for the purposes of this video, anything more than 120 hertz is likely BS marketing speak. True Motion from LG, Motion Rate 240 from Samsung, Sharp's Aqua Motion, blah blah blah. The fact of the matter is that whatever the video was recorded at is what it was recorded at. To make it have more frames means that you're messing with it somehow and that usually leads to problems and it's not the way the people who made the video intended it to be seen. So I wouldn't let the refresh rate have an impact on your buying decisions. So that's pretty much it. If you're looking at getting a TV that's under 65 inches, you're probably better off getting a regular HD model that has more features like full array backlighting or maybe some smart TV stuff that you might be interested in. Anything bigger than 60 or 65 inches, and I'd go for a 4K UHD TV. The fact of the matter is that except for streaming services, there are no networks that can broadcast over the air in UHD TV today. So with a few years before UHD starts to become the norm, there's no need to run out and upgrade if you're happy with the TV you have now. Hopefully that clears up a little confusion about 4K UHD and you'll be able to make better buying decisions when looking at a wall of TVs at the store. Oh, and remember, once you get a new TV, you should spend some time calibrating it. But that's a whole other video. As far as this video is concerned, remember to like, share, subscribe, blah blah blah, social media and all that jazz. I'm James Papadopoulos. Thanks for watching.